So we have two different shop floor interfaces for um, gathering data on the shop floor. One is called Explore and the other one's called Express. And I'll introduce both of them to you here. Um, generally speaking, Explore is, uh, gives you more information about every job and Express limits what the user can see um, so they only see what's assigned to them. So it really depends how you want to um, run your shop floor. Also notice scan badge right here. We can have it scan badges um, so they can log in that way if you happen to have a badge-based system in your facility. So a few things I want to point out here. This is just the home page for the Explorer. Um, firstly, we notice we have a gauge button here. Um, well, before I get into that, sorry, let me just introduce that this is an extremely lightweight um, application that runs um, in Google Chrome. Okay, it's just, it's simply um, browser based. This is going to an IP address. You can see it right up here, um, but it's going to an IP address in your intranet. It's not going externally, it's not hitting the web. Um, this is just an IP address internal to your server, so that way it knows where to populate the information. But a lot of our customers will use uh, just a tablet uh, for this. And again, because it's just a browser base, they can just pull up an IP address. So it doesn't matter if it's, you know, Apple or Windows or what have you. Um, you can use pretty much any tablet. Um, some customers will use a like a workstation, a computer workstation out on the floor. And even some of our customers start with putting this in their QC lab um, <laughs> and having their if they have some manual inspection um, um, uh, inspectors um, that are in getting this information, they'll just have them put in that data directly. But let's touch on the gauges very quickly. And this is the full gauge list that we saw in Inspection Manager for our measurement library, for our gauge library. And we can slim it down to what we want to see here. We'll use that ever popular blade micrometer. And now we can see we only have one. So if I want to use one, it's this one. And if I want to go grab this if, from its location, I simply click checkout. And now here's part of the neat thing about the database, right? Because it has most of this information already populated. It knows the gauge ID, it knows the tracking status, it knows the location, it knows all of this information. All I have to do is I'm logged in as Joe Inspector, so it knows who's logged in and it's assuming that I'm, um, I'm the one checking this gauge out. And then I just have to say where I'm taking it. I'm taking it to the main plant and I say, check out. And now immediately this, the current place has been updated and the tracking status and the current users all been updated. And then when I want to bring this back, I simply click check in and say, return to storage. And it puts it right back into the storage location that's defined in, um, in the gauge library. So all of your gauges, if you ever are looking for a gauge or if you have any lost gauges or whatever, this is a very good way to track your gauges in your facility. But going back to the home screen, um, the two that we're going to be focusing on mostly are right here because that's where we enter data into the, um, into the database. But did want to point out, we do have a scan barcode. If you happen to have a traveler that goes along with your parts around the shop, you can associate a, um, an inspection plan to, um, uh, to a certain part and then assign that barcode to it. So it knows all they have to do would be to scan the barcode of the traveler and it would pull up the information from, or the correct information um, that they need to enter information in for the actuals. So it's a super easy way to, um, uh, to pull up the right part. So we can go into gallery search here and we can just see that we have a, a different prints here. Anyone used to like an Apple product that has uh, pictures, this is just, it looks very similar to that. And all we have to do is go through here and pick out the part that we're using. Are we using this part, this part, this part? We can also identify it by customer name, um, project name, part name, um, even job number. We can come down here and select, like, oh, I'm on job number 63. Oh, here's my part for job number 63, the one I was using. And now I can simply click into here and it gives us a great uh, dashboard here to know, okay, how am I doing from a completion standpoint? Are any bad, is any failed? And now I can go into this job and then into this these samples themselves. And we all have um, uh, different dashboards for each step of the process. So once I go into this part, 
Now this is the final inspection. I'm going to I'm going to delve into this a little bit deeper in a, in just a couple of minutes. But I did want to point out here that we can go into our roughing operation. Notice our manufacturing operation up here. If we just go into our roughing operation, now I only have the dimensions that were defined in that roughing operation. And I need to now here's where the data starts to come together, right? And by the way, this is uh, as a side note, this is a very Again, lightweight, user friendly. You can pan this around. You can zoom in and out if you need to. Um, you can change the look here if you need to. Um, what some of our customers really like is this little bar down here at the bottom. And what this does is say, hey, this is your nominal and this is where you're in spec and this is where you're out of spec. Instead of kind of doing the math in your head very quickly, it kind of shows you right here. Uh, this was kind of surprising to us because we thought it was just a, a neat thing, but we find a lot of customers um, really like that and really use it quite a bit. But then we just come over here and I'll, I'll tell you what that is in a second. And we select the tool that we're going to use. Now, this is where the planning phase streamlines things, uh, well, downstream, because in the gauge category, we selected blade micrometer for op 10. And if you remember that, we did that a couple minutes ago. Now that we selected that, I'm only seeing a list for the blade micrometers. Whereas if I didn't select that, I'd have to weed through here and try to figure out where my micrometer is, what I'm using for this. So this is a good example of where the planning phase can help streamline things downstream. Also note here that it says expired no. This will not allow information to be entered if the gauge is um, expired. So it also helps to um, you know, make sure you don't get uh, erroneous data in your database. So we have this blade micrometer and we can say, I'm going to use that. And now that's our gauge. Now, if you can see, this is actually blinking. It's blinking orange right now. Well, it's listening. If you happen to have any RS-232 outputs or wireless or Bluetooth gauges at your facility, it's listening right now. For example, I'll hit control and that's what was in here before and my keyboard. And now you'll see control on here. So it's just listening for information. Now you don't have to have that, of course. You can tell that the keypad here is, is set up for a touch screen. And on a, uh, a tablet or a PC, you can simply enter the information in. If you have 0.5, let's say it's 0.51, we'll hit accept. It turns green and then automatically goes to the next one and prompts them for the next one. They don't have to, they can select any one they want. But let's say I, it retains the same gauge because it assumes you're, if you have one, you're going to um, keep measuring it. But let's say, for example, we had a go, no go gauge for this. OK, so it's an attribute data and we're going to uh, measure it with that. We write out on the floor, even though it's looking for numbers right down here, there's a pass fails um, option. If we simply toggle that, it changes our measured result and we can say that's a good part. It passed. OK, we could change that because that's not a, a, the tool we're using. And then we hit accept. Same idea. It turns green and prompts right to the next one. Now, let's say uh, this measures uh, five. And then we hit accept. So it's a bad reading, right? So if it's a bad reading, it'll automatically pop up and say, whoa, wait a minute here. This measurement is out of tolerance. Would you like to measure it again? And if you click on measure again, you can enter the information in um, just like you did the first time. Hit accept, the same prompt comes up. But let's say it really is bad. And we say keep failed. Now it automatically prompts us to start a non-conformance record. And we can simply click on add new. And again, the power of the database, it has all of this information pre-populated. It knows the job number, who, who's doing it, date, timestamp. Um, it automatically assigns a, non, a unique non-conformance number. Um, if it's a, a, um, associated with a machine or work center or an inspection center, you can put it here. You can put any comments um, you'd want to. And then the status, hey, it's a scrap part. It was bad. Now we have a defect code we can put in here and say, oh yeah, this is from, let's say, just say machining. And we hit OK. Now that non-conformance record is in the system and in the database. We can also set up to where notifications can be sent um, for, by email for non-conformances. 
So all of that information is captured and we can also tell it turned red here, kind of pinkish, but red nonetheless. So that's Explorer. Uh, one thing wanted to also show you since we're here together is the Express to give you a flavor for the differences. And you have to um, log in here just like we did before. And please note, again, scan badges right here. So you can simply scan a badge and log into Express. And you can see right away it looks different, right? There's not as much information. And being I'm logged in as Joe, I can only see the jobs that are assigned to Joe or, or Joe's um, in what we call an inspection center. So we're simply going to select this because it's the only thing I can select because that's what's assigned to me. And same here. And now I have two different parts. Here's our samples right here. Uh, we have sample one and sample 10. And I can see that sample 10 is already inspected. I need to select this one. And now you can see the same kind of flavor, but different, just a little different, right? Um, it's slimmed down. There's not as much information. Um, there's not as much um, entry. However, the same thing holds true. Enter the information here, click accept, prompts me to the next one. Enter the wrong information, the same um, prompt comes up and the same nonconformance is also um, populated as well. So it has a lot of the same functionality, but just depends if you want to slim it down for um, some individuals as opposed to others. And there's just a little bit of differences in the planning phase. Um, to figure out which way to go with this. So wanted to show that to you as well. Um, so you're aware we're not going to get into it um, during this webinar. However, we do have SBC associated with it. And we also have PQP Lite, which we'll show you in a couple of weeks. But you can have shop floor um, statistical process control to where um, you can see real time if you're in control, out of control, out of spec, we have um, automatic notifications for out of spec conditions, things of that nature as well. And that information can be put in right on the shop floor. But now I just wanna show you how we can bring that data together. So in Inspection Manager, I'm gonna go back to where we were before. Um, actually in, let me switch and go back into Explore here. I wanna show it to you this way first. We'll go back into Explore and then go back into our job. Okay. And our part here. Now, this part I have preset up. This is um, it's the same part, of course, but I wanted to paint a picture for you a little bit. So we talked about before, here's our manufacturing operation. This is only the finished part. Right. So this is the complete finished part, um, but I'm on the shop floor. Now, if I'm on the shop floor and I'm measuring something, I can enter it right in here. For example, I'm measuring this thread and uh, here's my thread. Here's my characteristics over on the side over here. If I simply select that thread, now I can I have information here. I can populate. I can say, OK, I'm, what um, gauge am I using to measure this Well, I'm going to use a thread plug gauge and hey, I'm going to select this one. So I have my gauge list here and is it good or bad? And I'm just going to say, well, it's a good part. I measured it and I'm going to hit accept. Now you can see the middle section. This is broken up in threes because there's three different callouts here. There's a diameter, there's a thread and there's a position. So the first section over here is for the diameter, the second section for the thread, the third section for the position. So I have information now for this, right? Um, I've pre-populated this to, to, for the sake of time. Um, there was a manual call out here for this through hole and then manual call out here for this, for these threads here. So those are done already. Well, now when I go back into Inspection Manager, I'm going to open that same file. And by the way, um, so you don't think I'm... Uh, um, kind of hiding anything. <laughs> we have job number 62 here, right? See that right there, job number 62. So when I go back into inspection manager, I'm going to open um, right here. We have job number 62. So I'm going to open job 62. 
And now when I come down here into the samples tab right here, I can click on here and see, I want to see my sample information. And this is the same exact information that you saw in um, on the shop floor. I have information for all of my manual checks. But now what I'm about to do, you really wouldn't have to do. I'm going to simulate bringing in data from a CMM. And we're going to um, bring it in from a file, but this would be done, again, automatically um, in the background. Here's all of the raw data from the CMM. And we're just simply going to say we're going to associate it with this sample number. And once we hit import, now it's going to merge the data from the shop floor along with the CMM data. And now we have a complete uh, print that shows our information, our actual information, um, right on top of the print, right over the uh, nominal information. And we can see that this came in bad. We can see easily see what's good, what's bad, um, what's out of spec condition. And if we just simply come up here to inspection reports and click on single piece report, and please note, we can have multiple piece report. You can create your own reports. You can import your own report templates. As many templates as you want, you can have as much in here as you want. Because once we click on single piece, right down here, we have to select the template we're going to use. And you can have as many templates as you want. We just happen to be set up for an AS9102 report right now. And once we hit create report, it's going to generate all of this information and take it over into Excel and generate our form one, which has all of our basic information, as you know, form two, which has our uh, material right here, and then form three, which has all of our information, all of our dimensional information. Notice that the four times are all spelled out four ways. Here's the information from the shop floor that we populated. Here's the thread from the shop floor, but here's the information from the CMM. So we've merged that data together so you don't have to re-enter it or recheck it as you go. Please visit HiQA to request a demo and learn more.